For those of you who don't like puzzles, you needn't pay attention for about 30 seconds. For the rest of you, there is a common word in the English language, which in one respect is unique. It has eight letters, but only one vowel. this oddity merely to help you keep this word in mind, for strength should be a characteristic of our faith. In the Greek the word is athsenes. We find nine occurrences of this word, or closely associated words, in Romans. In these words the A is negative. Words like unstrong, unstrength, unstrengthen would be equivalent in English if such words existed. But we translate without strength. It is instructive to look at each of the nine occurrences in Paul's letter to the Romans. We'll look at them in the order that they occur but we'll put them under three headings. The exemplar, or pattern, of our faith. The solution to our weaknesses. And our obligation in strength. The first section of our lesson, the exemplar of our faith. Therefore salvation is of faith, that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had who is the father of us all. Romans 4, 12 and 16. Just as little children follow in the steps of the grown-ups, so we too need to follow in the steps of that faith which Abraham demonstrated. In our lives we often must walk alone. But as we walk in faith, toward that eternal glory that God has ordained for us. Let us strengthen our faith by remembering the exemplar of our faith and by looking back to him as our example that we might walk as he walked and be justified as he was justified. And not being weak in faith, Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Romans chapter 4, verse 19. The idea that Abraham is the spiritual father of all who believe in Jesus Christ and who are not unstrong in that faith is also expressed in Galatians chapter 3 a parallel passage. Therefore know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the nations by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ 
have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Of course, this does not mean that Abraham is the founder of our religion or that we worship Abraham. But Abraham is a type or a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. As it says in 1 Peter 2, verse 21, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Jesus Christ is the antitype of Abraham. It is Jesus who died for us. It is he who is the author and finisher of our faith. Let us regard Abraham and his godly wife Sarah as exemplars of our faith and as our spiritual parents. And let us walk in the steps of their faith, for they lead us in the paths of strength, and to follow in their steps and the steps of all the godly saints through the sands of time is ultimately to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, who directs our pathway into a glorious and beautiful future. the second section of our lesson, the solution to our weakness. When we were, without strength, in due time Christ died, for the ungodly. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. When we were without strength, unstrong, without the death of Christ, we would be unable to stand justified before God. We were wretched and weak. But the power of God for salvation came to us through the gospel of the crucified Christ, enabling us in our weakness to be made strong. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. My obedience to God was imperfect, rendering me a sinner. Desire as I might to rectify this, I was powerless to do so, except through having faith in the saving power of Jesus Christ. He died and arose from the dead to enable me to escape God's wrath through my obeying the gospel by faith. I had no other way of escape except that which he held out to me and made possible through his cross. The Lord ensured that his way of salvation was such that I, 
weak as I was, could take advantage of it. Thus, when I gratefully yielded to him, he lifted me up, washed all my sins away, and numbered me among the saints for whom he intercedes. I speak in human terms, because of the weakness of your flesh. Romans chapter 6, verse 19. Just as we understand that little boys are not quite so good at playing cricket as big boys, so we ought to understand that it takes time for new Christians to overcome their lack of strength. But the power of Christ's sacrifice enables us all to bring our bodies into subjection to him and to present our bodies a living sacrifice well-pleasing to God. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is a growth process, a development from faith to faith. We should encourage people to do it, but they should not be coerced or unduly pressured. As foolish as it would be to have expected the baby Jesus to die on the cross, just so foolish it is to expect babes in Christ to be all that the strong Christian can be. God understands the weakness of our flesh, and he knows that his solution takes time. When Paul saw his own wretchedness, he asked in Romans chapter 7, Who shall deliver me from this body of death? The answer was, Jesus Christ our Lord. What the law could not do, because it was weak through the flesh, God did, by sending his own Son. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. Paul draws our attention to the fact that the law says, He who does these things shall live by them. That sounds like a blessing, but it turns out to be a curse. For what happens when through weakness one forgets or fails to do one of those things. He becomes a transgressor, and he dies, for the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. You may wait at the crossing one or two times every week, all of your life for years, and obey the law that says when the bell whistle sounds you must wait. It would only take one time to do the wrong thing, even after all those times of doing the right thing, and you would be dead. That is how it was with the law. Each command was like that, and that's why the law was weak. You could keep each command all of your life until you stumbled once, and then you died spiritually. That was the weakness of the law, and that's why we need to be saved by faith.
the Spirit helps our weaknesses, the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. In Romans 8, 34, Paul tells us of Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. As if it were not enough that Christ himself makes intercession for us, Paul has already said in verse 26, just read a moment ago, that the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. The Spirit himself makes intercession for us. Is not that an overwhelmingly wonderful thing? That in our weakness, both Jesus and the Holy Spirit intercede for us? What a wonderful solution God has created to overcome our weaknesses. The sacrifice of Christ for us when we were unstrong. The power of the transforming Christ in whom we can overcome the weaknesses of our flesh. The abolition of the law which was weak through the flesh and failed to justify the sinner. The intercession of Christ and the Holy Spirit on behalf of us in our weaknesses. The third section of our lesson, the obligation, in our strength. Receive the one who is weak. He who is weak eats vegetables only. Romans chapter 14 verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 14 verse 21. It is good neither to eat meat, or to drink wine, nor do anything, by which your brother stumbles, or is offended, or is made weak. We who are strong, ought to bear with the scruples of the weak. Romans chapter 14, verse 21. The mention of vegetarianism here is just an example of thousands of scruples we may meet up with among those who are weak in the faith. Those of us who are strong may have got over our scruples, but we are obligated to be considerate of those who haven't, even if it means giving up something we believe is all right for us to have. It's a good thing to forego eating meat or drinking wine or anything which is likely to offend or make our brother weak. We might believe that it is right between us and God, but we ought to bear with the scruples of the weak. When Paul says, we who are strong, there in Romans 15.1, there may just be a hint of chiding. For the truly strong are not those who tread on the weak, but those who bend down to lift them up. The strong do not overcome the weak, but shelter and nurture them. Not to mollycoddle them, of course, but to help them also to become strong. Just as the strong parents love to nurture their children and bring them up to become strong themselves, so we should treat those who are weak in the congregation of Christ. We started this series of lessons in Romans by quoting from the first chapter where Paul speaks of the gospel as the power of God to take us from faith to faith. We end this series by quoting from the last chapter where Paul says the same thing again. God is able, or has the power, to establish you, that is, to make you strong, according to the gospel which was revealed for the obedience 
of faith. That leads me to remark that we are only as strong in our faith as we are obedient to the faith. Think about that. Also in the last chapter of Romans, Paul mentions several men and women who were a strength to him in his ministry. Notable among them is Priscilla. This is the same Priscilla who was so sound in her faith that she could instruct a person in the way of the Lord more perfectly, even though he was already mighty in the Scriptures. Acts 18, 24-26 Here, in Romans 16, verses 3-4, to another side of Priscilla's strength is revealed. She risked her neck for Paul. Her partner in life, Aquila, was a man of the same mould, May we also be, may we be able honestly to say that we have grown from faith to faith and be able to call ourselves we who are strong. Thank you for watching. You are invited to visit simplybible.com.